Hi. The, the computer is telling me that I'm live. I have to confess that this week technology has not been my friend. I think I have everything set up. Hello, Lindy. I'm so glad to see you here. Um, this is the May edition of the Mystery Box Challenge. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for joining. And hello, Jane. Thank you for sharing and for organizing this amazing event. You look behind me. You can see the real life status of my studio space. I'm in the process of moving and opened an Airbnb just this past week. Lots of things going on, but nothing more important than the May Mystery Box Challenge. I got this package from Lindy Tate from Tater Buggin, and I'm excited to open it and create something that I hope will be fantastic or at least fun to watch. I'm going to grab scissors and open this. So if this is your first time here watching the challenge, this month we have eight artists participating. Um, I am following Jill Stalter. Um, and following me will be Amanda from Flamazing Art. So we each broadcast live from our page. And you can watch all of our videos on Jane Vellante's Create Every Day with Jane Vellante website. So here is what's in my package. I'm going to switch this screen bigger so we can see it together see if i got it in camera here we go i'm opening it up oh she even gave me a substrate she even gave me something to work on i i set out a lot of things all around me as i usually do let me read the card thank you so much lindy i so much enjoy watching you create and your husband cook and do all the things so trying to get this in camera range always a trick for me hi liz i'm so excited to see what you create i love your style Lynn's lindy from tater buggin well thank you for even thinking that i have a style uh sometimes we're the last to know right we just do what we do and when people say, oh, I like your style, it's the first time I, I realize I have a style. So we have some lace here, some beautiful buttons, and I can tell they are truly vintage because of the price tag that says Walmart 97 cents. So those are so cool. We have a playing card. We have an inherited family, some photos of, where's the camera there? I don't know where it is. Oh, some very cool ephemera. I'm gonna set these out in a charm. Ooh, this looks like the inside of a watch, so cool. So for me, maybe this will represent the passing of time or I don't know what, but I love the lace and a tea bag and a beautiful napkin old vintage ledger paper and gorgeous butterflies. Oh, Lindy, you sent me such amazing things. So since you sent a substrate, the first thing I'm going to do while I think of what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use my white paint I have set up here. This is called a uh, vintage linen, I think. So it's slightly off white. And I'm going to grab a brush and just put a coat of this paint down. Let's get a bigger brush so it doesn't take all day. Can you guys see okay? Hi, Diane. Hey, Doris. And I misspoke earlier. I said um, that you could watch these on Jane's website. That's not quite true. It is a Facebook group. It's a public group called Create Every Day with Jane Belante, and that is where you can watch all eight of us who are participating this month um, doing wall-to-wall -wall videos um, today. 
it started at 10 and it will go on until all eight of us have done our one hour. So we, we've got Jill and Amanda and Debbie and Lynn. I, I shouldn't try to say everyone because I know I'll forget someone and everyone should be remembered because everybody does amazing work in this challenge. We get a different package every time we participate and we send to each other and the rules are no opening. I can never find where to put my project. Here we go, right? Oh, you guys, I'm sorry. There. But is it here or is it here? Where the heck is the camera on this thing? Here we go. I think I'm under it now. Goodness gracious, I had said technology has not been my friend this week. I wasn't able to post anything about this event because my phone kept telling me I couldn't post unless I was connected to the Internet. And I was connected to the Internet and I would reboot my phone like 12 times. Yes, Jody, isn't it fun stuff? If you don't follow Lindy from Taterbug again, you need to because she always does and has amazingly fun and creative things. So there's my tag painted white and I kind of managed to get it into the frame. Um, I love this lace and I'm going to do something with it, but I'm going to trim it a little bit and I'm going to add some color to it quickly. So I'm going to trim this so it is more symmetrical for my tag, trimming like so. Can you guys see okay? Yes, we do love our Lindy. Um, so there, now it's more symmetrical. It will go off the sides. I want to give it a little bit of color. So let me look around and see what I have here to add color to this. I've got this napkin, pinks, pinks. So what I think I'm going to do is a little bit of green because green will contrast nicely with the pink. So I'm going to do a soft kind of a green. This is what I have handy. It is called Fancy Farm Girl, but I'm going to put so much water in it that it will be unrecognizable, I think, as Fancy Farm Girl. Here's my tag. I want to keep that in camera, and I'm just going to put a little bit of this green paint in my bowl, and I have jars of water. When you do the mystery box challenge, you become aware for yourself of what are your true essential art supplies. And for mine, it's lots of water, water soluble crayons, because I can get lots and lots of colors without stacking paint up. Some uh, matte medium or other decoupage kind of thing. Look at that. I'm gonna put this beautiful lace into the pot of green paint and squeeze it around. Very, very watery paint, mostly water, tiny bit of paint. So now I have, I like the color of this and I'm gonna set it aside on my camera holder to dry. You'll see it up here drying. So now we have green lace to go with some of the beautiful pink things that we've got. Um, I spilled a bit on here, so I'm going to repaint it white. We have one hour to make something that we're going to either be proud of or that we're going to learn a lot of lessons from. I love the tea bag, the vintage color of it. I'm just going to lay it right on that wet paint. I hope I do your supplies justice, Lindy. There we have 
some of that and I'm going to grab some matte varnish. Again, like a matte medium, um, any kind of decoupage medium would work here. See if I, nope, no green, that's good. Just going to put that over the top. Where I have folds and wrinkles, I just consider that to be more fun texture. Something I learned when I took a knitting in the round class some years ago it was a community ed class where we created our own pattern and we knit hats with our, our design of choice. And the instructor was a woman after my own heart because her philosophy was if you make if you make a mistake, if it's not what you intended, you just tell people that's a design element. Very handy art tip. Design elements. Um, they're wonderful. Okay, what else? Um, this ends here on the bottom. I'm going to put a little bit of this paper with some. Yeah, I like the color of that. So I'm going to use some more of my sticky down medium. Hi, Jody. Um, and Ruth, thank you for sprinkling. I hope you can see okay here. I'm putting on the matte medium. I am intentionally putting a little bit of text in some of the pink lines of this on here. And I'm going to just tear right there, putting that there. So there's that. And up here where I don't have full coverage, I'm going to take another piece of the handwriting from here that I like and get it to the top. I'll trim it up later. Ooh, which side do I like better? I think I like this writing. So we're going to do this one. And I have matte medium on both sides of that. After it dries, I'll, I'll trim it better. But for now, we'll just sort of cut aside closely. Just so I can see where I'm going with that. Oh, maybe I'll just fold it over the edge. Let's do that. We'll fold it over the edge. And when it is dry, I'll poke the hole back into that. Design element, remember that. Yes, Diane, I love the tag that Lindy sent as well. Hi, Shannon. Good to have you guys here. All right. It's always so counterintuitive where to put things. Here we go. So I'm, I'm getting happy with how this is looking. So it's just painted with an off-white paint. I laid down the tea bag and used some of the vintage text that Lindy sent. I'm loving just the effects of all of this. There's a key, there's a watch fob or watch mechanism inside. So symbolic of time passing. I'm gonna say happy Mother's Day to everyone. Um, most of the folks I know who are on this, doing this practice or do, doing this challenge are moms, but I know if we're not, if you're not a mom, you have a mom and we have all sorts of moms in our lives. I have, um, three children by, by birth, by natural ways. But everywhere I go, I tend to collect, um, I call them work daughters. So I'm up to about three or four work daughters now. And we always stay in touch. So I feel like I have a, a much larger family than, than my three beautiful, naturally born to me kids. Being a mom is, it's tough sometimes. I get a kick out of people who think, it takes, it's 18 or 20 years. Let me tell you, it is not 18 or 20 years. It is lifetime. Um, 
there's a butterfly. I cut that one out. I kind of fussy cut them because I chose this one because of the pink and the green. So it's all going to kind of hopefully come together in, in a pleasing way. Um, oh yeah, I like the butterfly. This butterfly is going to have a place. I want to use some of these pink flowers from the napkin Lindy scent. And if you guys are familiar with napkin decoupage, typically we want to separate the printed part of the napkin. So that's the top layer. Most napkins have two or three ply. This one I think has three, but I pulled I pulled two off at once. So I can save this and use it where I want white. I can do a lot of different things with that. But right now, I'm going to use some of the floral design that's on here. And I'm going to use a, a handy dandy tip that I picked up probably from our dear Royce, who's in my mind, she's my decoupage queen. She's the, uh, the queen and the guru of all things decoupage in my world. So this trick has to do with using a wet brush. So I'm just outlining the edges of the flowers. I don't even know if I need to cut away this white because it probably would just blend, but I'm going to do that anyway and try to get some of it off so I don't have real distinct what I try to avoid in my decoupage is distinct lines that show whoops there's a piece of paper so I'm just going to try to get rid of that if we leave some white I think that's okay because it will disappear but I want to make sure I get the pink and the green from these flowers and just carefully using the water just makes it a little bit easier to guide the tearing of the napkin. And when we get those frayed edges, frayed, this is the universal symbol for frayed. When we get the frayed edges, they just blend into our background beautifully. So you can't even tell that it's a piece of paper. So here's a hard edge. I'm gonna deal with that by not putting it on my, my design. I'm gonna go tear around a little bit more. I want these on here for their delicate color. So Lindy, do you and Mr. Mr. T, do you make these lovely tags or maybe you can let me know either in comments here or offline how you source them. They're wonderful. I'm wondering if you guys make them yourselves. There I cut that. That'll be a Ooh, that's pretty very delicate and i think because it's so fine some of that text is going to show through so let's give a squirt of matte medium i use my hand as a as a testing uh i'm always covered in paint i think most of us who do this often i don't know i guess there's very neat crafters and there's th those of us who just throw ourselves into it and are the opposite of neat. On that, I'm always covered in, I have clothes that I swear I will not paint in and I don't paint in them until I do. So I don't have any clothes that are truly safe. Whoops, went a little rough there, that's okay. I'm gonna, it's a design element, you guys. That's a design element. That leaf has a very organic shape now. And I'm just going to push it. Oh, look, it makes a shadow. So the thing with art is if you don't get what you want, it's kind of like in life. If you don't get what you want, you should want what you get and make it into something 
beautiful because you can. All right, I love the soft pink of this. And I really love, like right here, it looks like a watercolor splot. So I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to tear this edge just so we don't have that, oh, it's a napkin look. And I, I want to leave some of this un, uncovered. So I want to leave it where you can see the text very clearly, but put some of this pink here. We'll probably talk about, you know, the the rule of threes or the rule of odd numbers in design that having something three times or five is nice. So I'm go going to take a little of this pink and even put it just a little on the edge here and let that repeat. Ooh, I like it. Wrong brush. There we go. So the edges are... Lindy, this napkin is gorgeous. I love, love, love the soft colors. I may at some point need to add, because it's Mother's Day weekend, I might add a little quote about motherhood. So I'm of an age that when I was... Um, when I was in high school, I very much loved reading a book called The Prophet. Any of you guys read that book? Oh, Mr. T does make them. That is good to know. Um, I remember all the time my readings from, from The Prophet, Khalil Gibran, who... Uh, he said about children, he said, your children are not your children. They're sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. You can strive to be like them, but strive not to make them like you. So I try to remember that all the time, that my children have their own journey and it is not my journey, it's theirs. And I love them dearly and I think it's mutual. But, you know, they don't belong to me. They belong to themselves. There we have that. I don't know. I'm liking it so much. I don't know that I really want to add a whole bunch more. I love these, but they're thick. I may add them later, you guys, when I have all of my crafting supplies around. Something I'm thinking could be cool is to sew these together all right like see if i can get them under the camera and tell you what i'm thinking is to just take a line of sewing it's the wrong way <laughs> there we go so like up and down with my sewing machine to create a a something i could hang off of here maybe just one with a quote or Ooh, here's something, and I could maybe do this here today, is to add some string and add it as a tag with a note up here. Maybe we'll do that today. Yes. We've got people, mothers and daughters, it looks like. I might put these guys on the back. And a quote on the front. The key the passing of time with the watch. I know I don't have to use everything. What time is it getting to be? I want to track my time, 25 minutes, so we have lots of time. Um, still, yes, the prophet, right? The prophet is amazing. Um, I, I just love so much. I, I, and I still try to apply the teachings in, in my life. It was a very impactful book for me on the topics of marriage and creativity and doing things. 
as he said, for the master, not for... Anyway, I'll, I'll just uh, leave, leave you with that. If you have more interest in it, it's Khalil Gibran and very important writer in my life. Let's see where we're going to put this. I'm taking out these buttons to maybe add a little three dimension on here. I want to leave a place to put a quote. So playing around with the placement of buttons because I love what they add. And you know, I have, I have my three kids. I kind of like them down here. Don't want to cover all that up. Just playing with placement. This is what I do. I make a loose plan and then just play with the placement. I like the butterfly, but I'm not sure. We're just going to go for it. I'm going to put in somewhere. Let's go for it. Right there. Okay, butterfly is on. I'm going to reach behind me and get some thicker gel stuff to put these three-dimensional things. I will be right back. Let me know if you have any comments about this. All right, on my shelf back here, I have a heavy, a gloss heavy gel. This is, this happens to be Liquitex, but what I'm going for here is the thickness of this. It's kind of like the paste we used to eat in, in uh, grade school. Well, some kids ate it. I may have eaten it. I love the way it smelled, so I'm sure I was tempted to taste it. So I'm going to build up under here with the um, with the gel that holds its shape and will dry clear as can be. So I'm putting that on the button and pushing it onto the surface right there. Going to get a tiny brush and brush away the excess, but this is um, a gloss that will dry nice and clear and it should hold those in place really well. Lindy, what do you think of, uh, is this kind of what you, you might have been thinking when you sent all these beautiful things? I hope I do them justice for you. I... I love the, the colors and the textures. They add so much. So there we go. The buttons are along the side. Whoops, my fingers need to be cleaned off. That's where these extra ply can come in handy too that I took off the napkin. You can either use them in your artwork or you can use them to wash your hands. So I'm going to wash my fingers so I don't have um, stickiness everywhere and dry them on my apron. Get that brush going again to wipe off the excess. And then let, let this set to dry. There we go. Wiping off what's on top, knowing that that's going to dry clear. So let me tell you, uh, I am Liz. I don't think I even introduced myself yet. My name is Liz, and my business is Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. So I am about 15 miles east of St. Paul, so really in the Twin Cities metro area. But we are a small little old-fashioned village here with a small population, but a big heart. Uh, my husband and I have lived here for five years now. I only moved from the next town over, but the town I was in previously was 
was really a, a typical suburb. It was small when I first moved there with my kids and still had a lot of farms and fields. And then it just built up into strip malls and became kind of anonymous, you know, like so many suburbs tend to do without a downtown, without, I mean, there's lots of shopping and, and fun things to do and bike trails and such, but it just didn't, it didn't have a, a heart and a soul to it like small towns can. So we moved here to Afton five years ago and I just, it, it's like heaven to me. We're along the St. Croix River, which is the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin. You guys, I don't think I want to put this on the front. I'm going to put it on the back. So Liza Jane Designs in Afton. Um, my business partner, Jill. Jill Downing, not Jill Stalter, but Jill Downing. Um, just rehabbed and opened an Airbnb that we are hoping to use as creative retreat space, among other things, besides being a standard Airbnb. So I'm hoping I can talk the likes of Jane Belante or anyone else who's within, say, driving distance to, you know, come and do some creative workshops here in the St. Croix Valley with me. This is a, a pipe dream, and it's something that is going to be in the works for a while. But if you are if you are anywhere in the Midwest, upper Midwest, and you want to swing by and visit us, we are in Afton. And it is a beautiful, beautiful place on the St. Croix River, which is a national scenic riverway. So it's a protected waterway that is just amazing. I'm painting the back of this. This is tricky on a live video because, you know, we need to give things time to dry. But I have a heat dryer here, a little craft dryer. So, whoops, just pulled off a button. A little more gel. Creating uh, mixed media among other things, teaches me all of the life skills that I really need to learn, in, including patience and tenacity and try, try again. There's always another way. So I love to create for the sake of creating, but I also love to teach and create for the sake of what it I don't know how I bring it to the rest of my life. And I, and I stop being afraid of making mistakes so much because I know I can make changes and variations and it just applies all over the place. So there, I got both sides painted. I got that back on there. I'm going to make some noise now with my dryer here. Talk amongst yourselves. Thank you, Jane. Thanks, Ruth. You are more than doing them justice. Oh, she says, I love what you're creating. Thank you, Wendy. So I'm going to, this will be, if you, I hear feedback. Maybe I need to move away. I'm just going to dry this up. If any of you guys who are in the challenge or otherwise make videos, if you can give me pointers on how to find, I need to do like X mark, marks the spot because it is so not intuitive where to hold my piece while I'm working on it. So we've got that gorgeous butterfly right there. 
I love where the paper with the napkin tore created some vis some actual texture, not just visual texture. Just drying some of that gel. I don't know. If that's good enough for now. For I think it's I think it's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful because of the raw materials Lindy sent to me. Can you see if I get it in the right place? And move it around. Here we go. Right in here. That's where the napkin tore when I was applying it. But it's one of my favorite spots right now. Can you see it now? Jane. I give up before it shows on the camera. There, I think. So where it tore is actually now one of my favorite parts. So that's one of those life lesson things when something goes wrong and I think it's the end of the world, things switch around and it turns out to be something awesome that I just didn't expect. So enough about that. I need to find a place to rest this so I can work on the back without knocking those buttons off. So here's a pink thing. I'm going to go like this. So the buttons are safe and I'm going to take my green lace and we'll dry, try to dry that up a bit. And this is going to be like a three dimensional piece that'll look good on the front and the back. I might leave some hanging. Let's see if that looks good. If we want to, oh yeah, I think I'm going to hang this piece over the top and we'll work that into the hanger. Almost looks like angel wings back here. I love this piece of lace and I love the color of it now that it's, it's green and goes nicely with those pinks. I'm going to use that same heavy body gel to stick the lace down, still kind of damp. It's patterning on there, which I think is also lovely. Let's, let's do that some more down here. And kind of make a stamp out of the lace to get a patterned background. Put some along the sides. You can use a lot of things to print and to stamp. My niece was visiting me last weekend. She flew in from Massachusetts. Kelly, if you're watching on the um, live or the replay, say hi to everybody. Yeah, Lindsay, you're right. It, the imperfections are what makes a piece dear, I think. It makes it special. Um, but my niece was visiting, and we did a couple of little mini workshops. I try things out on her to see the best way to teach them to my workshop participants. And she says I've ruined her now, that she can't look at anything without wondering what kind of mark it would make. So I've got all sorts of things laying around here that she used. And I'm so proud of you, Kelly, for taking to it like a fish and water. So she was making marks using these little lacy things and sticks and just doing all sorts of fun stuff. So she's uh, turning into one of us, you guys, that every time she looks at something, she's like, hmm, I wonder what it would do if I did this. So as they say in the movie Moana, what can I say except you're welcome, Kelly. You are welcome. I hope that your artist mind is going to take you to some wonderful places. There, I'm liking that. I'm gonna wrap that around to the front, put some more gel on there. Whoops, like this. Get some more gel. 
Jane, will you let me know if if I'm more in camera view now, if this is working better where I have it placed? I want to make sure people can see. This is wet lace still, but I think it will uh, dry nicely there. A little bit of gel on top isn't going to hurt it. Pressing it in to make sure it will dry and stay. I like it. You like it? Uh, there. Okay, so where are we? We have a tag that just lost a button. More gel. This time I'm going to pile it on there and push the button right inside of it. Let's just do that. We're going to go very thick with the gel where I want the buttons to be. I'm going super thick right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, super thick with the gel. It's a heavy gel. It dries clear though, so the stuff it's going on top of will not be hidden under it. Take those buttons back again and try, try again, pushing them into the gel, pushing them into the gel. One more time. I'm going to set that down because the lace will cause it to sit up. I probably will have to do something to get that to stay in place, but I know we can make it work. I have confidence in us, you guys, us creatives. Uh, we don't, we don't quit easily, right? We just hang in there and try another approach. So this gloss gel, I'm taking the excess and moving it around, then I'm going to leave it really heavy under the buttons so it will hold that in place. Okay. Trying to watch the time here. Where are we? Many people comment when we're doing this that it seems like you've got a long time, but then uh, you try new things and it's like, ah, I'm running out of time. So, let us try to get those buttons in place. Push that lace up along the edges. Okay. Don't go anywhere, you guys. Don't go anywhere. There we are. It will dry nice and clear. I know I've said that. I keep telling myself that, so I make sure I believe it. There. Get rid of some of the excess. Gently with this brush. Smooth that around. Okay. Um, I have an awl here somewhere. That is not an awl. I have an awl I want to use to punch the hole back in here. Of course, I can't find it. So let's, up. Oh, we'll use the end of a paintbrush. That works as well because it's just paper here. Didn't even need an awl. So I have a hole back in there. We're going to do a little bit of drying. Happy Mother's Day to you, Debbie, and hi, Shannon. It's been a while since I've been live and gotten to see you, Shannon, so great to have you here.
For anyone just tuning in, and I hope that you can hear me over this noise, I'm working on a tag, a wood tag, sent to me by Lindy Tate of Tater Buggin. She sent beautiful ephemera and buttons and lace. We colored the lace using very watered down paint. So it's a shade of green that goes with the, with the napkin decoupage that Lindy sent. I'm working against the clock to try and finish as much of this on camera as I can. Looks like we have about 15 more minutes. So I'm going to reach around in my studio. I don't know. It's not really the right color green. I have this sari silk that I dyed with. I'm sure I dyed it with paint but I don't like, it's not the right color. So what can I do? I can take a piece and cut it. And this is that whole life lesson thing, right? It's not what I want, but I have green paint that does match. So I'm gonna take the green paint that we use to dye the lace. Let's see. And now I have sari silk that's going to go nicely with the lace and with that. We face challenges and we go, ha, I can do this, right? So let me see if I can dry this up a bit. Well, Shannon, not, not a problem to be late. You're here. And thanks to Jane's um, Facebook page, Create Every Day with Jane Galante, you can watch me from the beginning anytime. And you can also catch all of the other artists who are doing the challenge this month. So Jane has all of us posted on her site. This is drying pretty quickly. We'll put it up here and kill two birds with one stone, get more drying. All right, so just that quickly, right? We, we took the from that color to this color, which is gonna blend with that more beautifully. And you can, you can dye fabrics easily with, this is a clay-based paint, any chalky style of paint. When you mix it with water, if you've got a good quality chalk or mineral paint, typically, you know, you can you can dye ribbons and fabrics. Now, may not hold up to washing. I, I don't think I would try to dye clothes that way. But when we're doing mixed media projects that we're not going to wash, the paint will stain our fabrics. I'm going to go get a needle. Talk amongst yourselves, guys. Okay, I'm back. Almost knocking over my light back here. But when you have a well stocked craft room or craft cardboard box or whatever it's like I think it adds to the joy of creating I am so fortunate now to have a shop in a studio space but I haven't always had that and you know we make do all right so I have this needle I threaded it up with the sari silk. I'm going to pull it right through the lace on the back to also help hold it in place. So pulling the silk. I'm going to make sure I leave one sticking on the front and pull the other one through the back. And that also is going to help 
this part. Stay up. Um, there's a product that stiffens fabric. Maybe I'll stiffen that part of that later. But right now, I don't know. We're going to put some through here. And just pull that through. So do we see how quickly we can take things we have and make them things we want? That's one of the tenets of my shop is, um, you know, to reuse and repurpose. I, I can get on soap boxes and I try not to, but I do like to inspire people to, to look at what they have already and see if there are ways to make it into what they want it to be. I think... We're kind of conditioned to buy more stuff when in reality, we probably have enough stuff already and we could just look at our stuff with a fresh eye and have fun making it into something that we're gonna enjoy for more years to come. Things come and go in style, but we can change up the color, we can change up the style we have the uh, capacity to do all that. So you see what I'm doing here? I don't, you can see some of the, kind of made a little pattern there with this green raffia, not raffia, sorry silk. Um, trying to pull that out. So it'll have a way to hang. All right, here's what we have. I am liking it. Oh, yeah, I was going to do this on there. I don't know. I think that would be too much now. So I'm going to draw a line and edit and not do my original plan to add this because I think I've got lots of stuff already. Ooh, maybe underneath. Ooh, maybe. Ooh, what do you think of that? I kind of, what? See that? I did add it. I added it to bring some color to the back. All right, Lindy, I made use of one of these other pieces to add more color to the back of this wooden tag. We've got the raffia silk. I keep calling it raffia, the sari silk, hoping, helping to hold this dyed lace in place. I'm going to need to do something with this end, and I'll probably just wrap it. I will um, search. I have Pinterest boards and notebooks full of quotes that I collect that inspire me. So I will go to my stash of quotes. Um, I. I'm fortunate that I have a laser color printer, color laser printer at home, and I can print off a quote that means a lot to me to add to this. And maybe just very small because I think it's it's got a lot going for it already without extra words, but somehow I, I feel called to add some words to this. I'm going to keep futzing at... The excess gel so it's not so thick where we don't need it to be and you see I just use my hands to wipe off the excess it's good that the products we use are not toxic these are very um, friendly I'm liking it I'm loving the colors great choice of um, Products to send, Lindy. I'm going to have some minutes left here. So let's see if there's things we can do to make this better without, you know, going too far. Always a problem for me is knowing when to stop. But as I look at the back of this, 
Um, I think I want more pink to be around the edges. So I'm going to take one of those water soluble crayons I have. And I use these in so many ways. Right now, I'm just scribbling some of the crayon itself onto my Teflon mat. And then I'm going to take some matte medium and set it to, on the side of that. Maybe a little water. And just get a wash of paint from those crayons. And these are... I used them in our last video. These are Caran d'Ache Water Soluble Neo Color 2. But there are other brands um, and other types of water soluble crayons or pencils that you can use to make a wash of color. And I'm just going to add some pink on here very softly because I love the way the pink and the green kind of play together. I'm trying to keep it off my sorry silk. And I just want that tint. I don't want it heavy. I just want a little hint of pink. I might even use those extra ply of the napkin and wipe it back because just a wisp of color is what, what I'm wanting on there. There we go. A little more water. Maybe dot some in here. I don't even mind if it gets on the lace a bit. So there. It's a little bit purpley. So maybe later I'll come back in with a, a brown wash to antique it a bit. You never have to be satisfied with things that aren't satisfying. You can add another layer and make it what you want. But it's getting there. It's getting to a place that I'm enjoying more. Let me add some pink to these sides. We have a few minutes left before I turn you over to, well, I'm not turning you over. I'm just going to end my video and Jane will introduce Amanda's video. Again, Amanda is from Flamazing Art and we'll see what she does with her mystery box this month. I have the honor and a little bit scary prospect of sending stuff to Jane herself this month. And since Jane is the, Jane's just the person that created this whole awesome process that there's a little bit of a um, little starstruck here. I'm going to quick dry this and see if I have one minute to add a little distress ink to it. Kathy, yes, the videos will be available in Jane's Facebook group, Create Every Day with Jane Delante. Amber is up next. I, I wrote down Amanda, but it is simply Flamazing Art. Forgive me. Amber, for getting your name a little crooked there. It's It's been a week. I'm going to grab some Distress Ink real quickly. And again, just to uh, demonstrate before I kick this off, 
how you can use a distress ink and I'm going to put that on here and it takes away the way too pinky purpleness of that and creates a look I like more. So I'm Liz. I'm going to turn you over to uh, Amber of Simply Flamazing and thanks for joining today. Bye.